<laughs> so much touch Just give him more knee space on that side. I don't even know. Yep. Okay. We're, are we settled? We're settled. Um, yeah. Uh, we went and saw the family. Yay. I thought it was. I thought it was all right. It wasn't like a like a tour de force, but I enjoyed myself. It it wasn't a complete piece of shit, but it was not a good movie in my opinion. Like it, it, I've seen much worse this this year, but I I, I didn't care for it really mm. at all. I mean, what it was had, your problem with it? Uh, the, the plot, well, not even the plot, just the pacing and the the storytelling were were just not good, in my opinion. Um, it, it had a solid plot. Uh, the acting was just fine. It was even directed well. It was just the pacing of the movie was just so off and distant and for the first half of the movie, it's like, oh, these people are doing this and then the second act of the movie is just it meandered so much that it seemed to lose track of what was the storyline to me and okay. when, a, when a movie goes like starts ignoring the major plot it's a, it's an hour and a half movie I mean they could have done that it would have made a great TV series I just didn't think it was a good movie okay um well, I, 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 I disagree with the pacing, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, basically, the premise of this movie is that uh, uh, Robert De Niro and Michelle Pfeiffer are uh, like in the Witness Protection Agency because he was in the Mafia, and he, he ratted on his cronies. And so uh, they've been moving them around, and this new place that they're in is in like the south of France, in like this queer little like, French oh, it's, suburb. Yeah, it's in Normandy. And uh, they're trying to kind of fit in and, you know, not get... Um, you know, not get cottoned on to by the Mafia, and uh, it's basically each member of the family is trying to figure out how to like grow as a person within these like really constricted anonymous parameters, and I think that that aspect of it was what made it in an interesting movie for me, because like it's, yeah the pacing was a little choppy, but with a movie like this where you're trying to concentrate on like four different characters, each doing their own thing and then tying those all all those things together into one uh, one central concept it, it it's hard to flow uh, flawlessly but I mean I think the choppiness did it didn't like ruin the movie for me I think I think it made it kind of quirky yeah it, it didn't work for me at all um, at all okay um, it, it's you just you look so sad. I, I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I, I didn't really enjoy the movie at all. It had moments, um, but I mean, at the same time, it has four main characters, and I, I really the only one who I felt was like had a story arc at all that wasn't annoying as fuck was Robert De Niro. What? I thought the kids were fantastic. Oh god, I wanted to just smack the shit out of the daughter through the whole movie. She's a teenage girl. She's supposed to be like, Okay, well basically, okay. Robert De Niro, the way that he's trying to like grow as a person, he's just, he's decided to write this book because um, his cover story is I guess he just like makes one up on the fly whenever he goes to a new place, which I didn't really understand. But uh, his cover story in this new place is that he was a writer. He'd made up this bullshit thing he was writing about. What he's actually doing is writing his mem memoirs. Uh, Giovanno was I guess his actual name, although in France he was going by Fred. Um and so he was basically, he had set up like a little office in his greenhouse and was trying to kind of lay out his business with the Mafia while getting yelled at by Tommy Lee Jones, who was basically like, you're writing down all the stuff that we need to keep super secret. And, uh, huh? So, um, and then Michelle Pfeiffer, which, th that was the only character that really bugged me, uh, because I thought she was kind of weak, um, was See, the I wife. thought her acting was fine. I just thought the ridiculous New Jersey accent was completely unnecessary. I don't think that's ridiculous, but um, she was basically like trying to help them integrate while also dealing with her temper that made her blow up a grocery store with no co consequence at the beginning of the movie because the French people were making fun of her for wanting peanut butter, which I guess is like some French thing. Peanut butter is crap. Um, but then the kids, who I thought were the interesting characters, well, the, the son is basically learning how to be a mafioso. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but um, 
kind of like every new school he goes to, he figures out, you know, the different cliques and stuff and sets up his own little racket. And then the daughter, um, is a high school girl and, you know, figures out which boy that she wants to date. And in this situation, she wants to date, uh, some, like, math tutor, and he's, like, this adorable little French boy, and so she ends up giving her virginity to him, and he's French, so he's basically like, thanks, that was great, bye! And so, uh, she decides to kill herself, but, um, right about then is when the mafia cottons on to them, so the family gets together in, like, a singular group and guns them down mercilessly in the street. Wait, the daughter kills herself? No, she was going to. She was oh. like... <laughs> <laughs> she was literally like, she had gotten all dressed up, like, I'm going to be with the one that I love, and is, like, standing on the roof, and she, like, punched some girl and stolen her cell phone, and was, like, on the phone with this guy, like, Andre, or whatever his name was. Okay. Like, I just wanted to hear your voice one last time, and then looks down, and there's, like, all these guys with, like, guitar cases kind of running around in the street, and she's like, shit, okay, I gotta call you back. <laughs> like, Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was like, wow, this sounds like it gets really dark. <laughs> it does have some ridiculously dark spots, because, like, um, whenever Giovanni, or whatever, whenever Robert De Niro's writing his memoirs, it keeps, like, flashing back, and so it's like, Showing him like dunking this guy's head in acid and like his 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 the water in their uh, in their little French house is running brown and he's like spending the entire movie trying to fix that he's like he goes to the plumber and the plumber can't help him so he breaks the plumber's legs in twelve places and then he goes to the mayor and the mayor can't help him so he slams the mayor's hand in a drawer and then he goes to this like well, he has a little fantasy about slamming the mayor's hand in a drawer. So he goes to the uh, the sewage company and um, like stages a motorcycle accident where he like basically drags the guy down the street to give him like road rash, and then is like, okay, well you know I'm gonna go ahead and kill you if you don't tell me why my water's brown. And the guy's like, it's pub number five, it's pub number five. So he sets up like this cartoonish dynamite stick with a ticking alarm clock bomb yeah. in pump number five. <laughs> and so it goes off in the third act when you know, he's forgotten that freaking bomb is there. And so he runs back to his house and turns on the faucet and just stares at it until it runs clear. He's like, yeah! <laughs> and then his house blows up because the mafia is there. I haven't even seen this movie, but I'm kind of with Sarah. This <laughs> was alright. It was fun! <laughs> I it was fun, and I, I liked all the characters. Like, again, Michelle Pfeiffer was probably the weakest one, because she didn't have as much of a character arc. But, you know, she she didn't feel like an oversight. She just kind of felt like one of the less important characters. Yeah, I just, you know, like, the concept of the movie, when you short it down like that, does sound like fun, but in the long form, I did not find it engaging or entertaining. Hmm. I did. No, well, good for you. And even it had this fun little part where uh, the son was talking about how he didn't understand why his dad was writing <coughs> a book because he was so expressive with just the word fuck. Like, when the word fuck came out of his mouth, it could mean, like, oh, that guy's gonna die, or this pasta's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you need to write a book? You just need to say fuck a bunch of times. And it, I, think, I thought it was in keeping with the theme that I came up with of trying to define yourself within a constricted parameter. Nailed yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, good for you. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a lackluster waste of an hour and a half. It didn't have parkour. No, it didn't that have parkour. That kind of annoyed me, because I, I heard it was Luke Besson, and I'm like, oh shit, Robert De Niro parkour! This is going to be amazing! But yeah, there was like there was no parkour to speak of. So I cried. There was a lot of like very, very Frenchy French people, though. I don't guess... That, that feels prejudiced to say, but they were really f like, oh, la, 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 la. You know, and like making fun of her, oh, a bird de cochon. <laughs> Just like, yes, peanut butter, you stupid American. Maybe peanuts for monkeys. Oh, ha, ha, ha. And then she blows up the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> and like the little math tutor guy, he's like thin as a rail, and he's got like big round tortoise shell glasses he has to keep pushing up on his face and like immaculate stubble. It was it was it was very stereotypically French. Yeah. 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 I don't like it. I thought the acting was fine. I thought it was it, it was very obviously a Luc Besson movie. Or mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, okay, this is happening, this is a great shot, this is a great shot, and then suddenly there's, you know, one of the mafia guys, instead of pulling out one of the eight guns he has on him, pulls out two matching knives and chases after a kid. 
It's like, that's a very Luke Besson thing yeah, to he's, do. He had to use some flair to it. Big Pussy was in it. Nice. I was, like, he's been in... Because basically whenever they need a gigantic Italian guy, mm -hmm. they get him. And so he's been in a bunch of stuff. But every time he shows up, I'm like, yay, Big Pussy's here! <laughs> Yeah, I I uh, I think handled differently. Even as like a long run TV show, it would have been fine. But it just seemed like they were cramming way too much in way too short a time, and it didn't work. You were saying it meandered, though. Exactly. Well, it, it meandered off into, into little subplots that would have been great if they had you know eight more hours of time to tell a story, but they didn't. They. They meandered off what was the base, like the, the core of the story, and into things that were just completely unnecessary, in my opinion. Uh huh. Um, you know, why spend so much time with the the two guys across the street that are watching them, the handler guys that are watching them? They're, they're, they're because not, they were adorable. They were intended to be comic relief characters, and they weren't funny at all. I don't think they were necessarily intended to be comic relief characters. I, I th I'm pretty sure they were. Okay. I mean, that's my opinion. I just didn't think it worked. And they, they weren't necessary to the story, really. You could show that they're there, but you don't need a ten-minute scene of them eating peppers. It wasn't them eating peppers. It was them talking to Michelle Pfeiffer about her having to move away from the French Riviera or wherever the fuck they were at. I, I could agree with you that, yeah, maybe those characters were necessary, but it, it didn't ruin the movie for me. But there was enough of those kinds of scenes throughout the movie that it was just... Like, the whole barbecue scene seemed unnecessary. Um, other scenes like that just didn't... What was them attempting to integrate? It just... It, it was a distraction to me. Okay. Because they were attempting to integrate, but at the son's uh, recommendation, they attempted to integrate by acting as flamboyantly American as they possibly could, because that's what the people were expecting. I thought it was in keeping with the with the general sway of the movie. You know, plus it, it introduced all the characters that got gunned down mercilessly in the streets later on. And, uh, you know, it showed that Robert De Niro's not good at barbecuing. I don't know what you want from me. You just it's look so just, sad. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad of a movie. It, but it wasn't a good movie. It was, I mean, it's just... It's, yeah, again, it, I'm, I'm probably not going to remember it two months from now. And, you know, I'd be like, oh, the family, that looked pretty good. And Brad would be like, oh, no, you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, sitting here now, having just watched it, I thought it was fine. Yeah, sitting here now, having just watched it, I felt like uh, I killed an hour and a half with something that I didn't find really entertaining or enjoyable. I thought it was cute. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've pretty much plumbed the well. I liked it just fine. Dave is sad. Sad forever. <laughs> His sad. evening is ruined. <laughs> what previews did we get? Um, Mandela. Well, should we pause it? Or fuck it. Brad, your call. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Why ruin the flow? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got Mandela, which I still need, I need to find that song that they play at the beginning of that, because it's really pretty. But, um, that looks alright. Uh. Um. Fuck, what else did we get? We got a lot of. We got The Counselor again, which I'm still looking forward to. I don't know what the fuck that movie's about, and I've seen that preview like three times. It's like, What's Her Face has From what I read, leopard it's... spots tattooed on her back. Penelope Cruz is engaged to somebody. Fastbender. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you... From You're what, telling me because I have no idea. From what I understand, it's about it, it's about dealing drugs to a certain degree. Uh, uh huh. But I mean, and I, counseling those who deal drugs. I don't know. It has something to do with a lawyer. Uh huh. Um, th that's all I really know about it, and I, I I really don't care. I'm still looking forward to seeing it very very much so because a it's Ridley Scott and b it's Cormac McCarthy, and that just makes me happy. Fair enough. Um, ooh, we got that Mary Poppins movie. This is the first oh, I've yeah. heard of it. It's like Tom Hanks playing Walt Disney. Oh, Saving Mr. Banks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Saving Mr. Banks, which... She looks exactly like fucking Walt Disney in that, but it looks nice. really boring. It, it <laughs> does look really boring. And then we got uh, Captain Phillips again. Yes. Which it seems like every time they show that preview, it becomes less and less about Captain Phillips and more and more about the Somalian pirates. Yeah. yeah. Back in my country, you have to kidnap people, otherwise you pretty much starve. Yeah. Rather than, you know, air I, yeah, they're on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Captain Phillips impression. I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. We got Drive. 
Rush. It's like Rush, is that what it's called? Oh. Mm-hmm. It looks sexy as hell. That we movie looks that boring as fuck to me. We were at the horror movie, so we got Carrie. Oh, of course. <laughs> I still Good. haven't seen that preview. Really? You guys get oh, my. It, <laughs> it's it's like the entire it. movie in, like, a minute. Uh-huh. It, it gives you the entire movie of okay, Carrie. Okay, let's watch that, then. Yeah, it, it's... <laughs> you don't it need... see her phone number at the end of the trailer. What? It says, uh, I keep... I keep trying to remember to take a screenshot of it. So, so <laughs> like, do, 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 yes. Plug it up, click. So, like, we can come out here in the car and call it. <laughs> oh, um, man. It says, like, call Carrie, and it has a phone number listed on it. As many times as I've gotten that fucking trailer, I should have that number memorized. <laughs> but, yeah, the I was noticing with the Rush that there's basically two trailers that they use. Mm. The, like... Oh no, he's been in a car crash, and then the entire trailer is like the rehabilitation. And the ooh, car driver is so sexy, and like that blonde guy with his hair just like flipping in the breeze and making Four. out with broads. Chris fucking Hemsworth. Yeah, yes. like I like the second trailer it's for like that. It's like two different movies. Yeah, I, the, the, I was kind of, when I first saw the trailer for that, I was kind of, for the first trailer, I was kind of like, Dave, I was like, well, that looks like so not my taste at all mm-hmm. but the second trailer i got i was like oh okay well that might be kind of fun yeah if it's the second movie where like the guy getting a melty faced is like mm-hmm. you know the subplot then i could totally get into it but if it's all melty face then yeah i'm not watching that movie mm-hmm. well yeah i think melty face is uh the antagonist of the film i don't think it, it seemed not- like less of an antagonist and more of like a rivalry well an antagonist and not that he's like a bad guy but chris Hemsworth would be the protagonist so uh, yeah, he's not the French racer from Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a reference only you get, Brad. <laughs> oh, well, how obscure could that be? There's a French racer in Turbo, and he was the bad guy. Does he try to eat the snails? No, he tries, he tries stepping on him at the end. Like, they're dragging their... Uh, their car. There's a car wreck at the end of it, and they're trying to drag their their cars across the finish line and Turbo's lost his power and he's slowly crawling and the French guy's like trying to step on him and he's like okay, snail or no snail I don't think you're allowed to murder your competitor. <laughs> well apparently it's written into the rules that snails are allowed to race maybe since it doesn't explicitly was... say you're not allowed to murder your competitor, it's totally allowed <laughs> Yeah but they had to go to a commission first to even get to have the snail allowed like, you don't to know, race. Maybe like one of the deleted scenes was him going to the commission to see if he's allowed to totally step on him. Yeah. yeah. He's just like, Man, I, <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, he steps on the snail. What are the worst repercussions that could happen? Well, it's really gonna put his uh, public opinion polls down. down it's gonna be a real short here. movie. Well, it's not like he's going to jail for murder or anything. It's a fucking snail. He's gonna lose his uh, racing license. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna lose all his uh, his endorsements. <laughs> <laughs> gonna hit him fiscally. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have much to say about that movie. I, I liked it just fine. I thought it was cute. With, the movie we just went and saw. Oh, You've forgotten it already, yeah. You forgot the title already. <laughs> the family. There you go. Because I had like this weird intro where it was like mother, father, sister, brother. Wait, they, wait, wait. That like, sounds like Tree of Life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They didn't say it out loud and focus on it for like 35 minutes. And then they like mooshed all the words together and it was like the family. And I got so distracted by that that I have no idea what the voiceover at the beginning was. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh... God. The d- ridiculous way in which the Mafia finds them, too. Oh, God, yeah, that was a little silly. Th- that was beyond silly. That was fucking stupid. Well, because the whole movie was focusing on, like, Robert De Niro's totally going to make them get found out because he's writing his memoirs, for Christ's sake. And then, meanwhile, the son is, like, helping out the school newspaper, mm-hmm. and they ask him for, like, uh, sort of a... Uh, a play on words in English. So he remembers back when he was a little kid, and, like, uh, one of his dad's friends was talking about, like, uh someone good enough was in a movie he's like ah if it's good enough for you then it's good enough for me and so he puts that in the thing and then meanwhile we follow this freaking school newsletter like onto a plane and over to America and into a landfill and then some guy's like using it to hide his porno mag and then eventually some guy gets it and like wraps a bottle in it and brings that bottle to the head of the mafia who's in jail <laughs> who's in jail he's like oh delicious wait a minute yeah. Send all the mob. So they basically, yeah, they send every single dude that they have. They ran out of fucking ideas. What? They ran out of ideas, and that's all they could come up it with. It was just a really silly plot. thing. But it I was did not ruin the movie for me. It was fuck. very silly. So the the son has decided that he's gonna run away, and so he's sitting at like the train station, and the train pulls up, 
And all of a sudden, just the mob starts pouring out of the doors with, like, yeah, the guitar case and, like, the violin case and, like, the obviously full of guns case. And he's sitting there like... So he runs over to, like, a payphone and then the, the hijinks ensue. Yeah, okay. Oh, I, I want to She sold me on this. I want to see this movie. It is the least pinpoint accurate mob hit in history because it's basically <laughs> the entire mob goes to the town and then they go over to the police station and kill all the policemen mm -hmm. and then they go to the fire station and kill all the firemen all one of them Jesus and they Christ. stab the tires on the fire trucks in case that the fire trucks come without their one fireman and then they basically like form this massive fat leather jacketed perimeter around the house and shoot it with a what what was that was that like a, a rocket launcher yeah shoot a rocket launcher at the house so it explodes but Robert De Niro and his dog, which the dog I think was the most useless character in that movie, survive because mm -hmm. they're in the backyard suddenly, even though they were in the living room when we did the flash cut to the guy with the, the rocket launcher. And so they're like, oh, and they get up and they kind of like wander. And so it's basically the family wandering around murdering this army of mob guys <laughs> in a kind of a weirdly haphazard way, but it gave, gave you the impression that it's like, uh, a family unit that works well together, you know? I thought it was cute. I can't believe you didn't like it! It was, it was, uh, it was I, so sad. I, I, yeah, no, not good. I think it's because I'm such a contrarian that the more Davis say he doesn't like it, the more I'm like, no, come on, this is the best movie of it's the, the year. It's the best movie of It the was year, so good. No, it wasn't. Did you like it better than The Big Wedding? Honestly, no. <laughs> No, the big wedding was a waste of fucking time, but at least I gave a fuck about at least two of the characters in that movie. Did you give a fuck about the I, dog? The dog was injured. They, like, had his paw all wrapped up at the end, so you could tell that he got injured. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whenever they did flashbacks, they'd cut to the dog so you could see how old it was and kind of gauge how old the flashback <laughs> is. Like, oh, puppy just a puppy in this one. This would have been, like, ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was a little distracting that the sun had that gigantic kind of sticky outy mole like right in the middle of his face. I couldn't stop looking at it. Mm -hmm. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, yeah, the more we talk about this movie, the more I realize I really didn't like it. The more I talk about this movie, I'm kind of enjoying it. <laughs> The daughter was really cute. Like, I'd never seen that actress before, but she had, like, masses of long blonde hair, and so, like, you could buy the fact that she was 17 while simultaneously buy her seducing some college kid, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and also buy her being stupid and immature enough to kill herself over him not wanting to date her. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and the well, son Which was seemed good. so against the character that they introduced at the beginning of the movie who beats the shit out of a guy with a tennis racket for being rude. Oh, that was amazing. He, he wasn't rude. He basically tricked her into his car and drove her out to the middle of nowhere and then attempted to take her top off. So yeah, rude, okay, but further than rude. Poor form, old man. <laughs> it was basically like, she's walking down the street and I thought that she was doing like a honey trap, you know, mm. because these guys drive up and she doesn't look remotely surprised. And they're like, oh, baby, you know, Miss America, climb in, you know, we'll give you a ride home. And she's like, nah, I'm fine. I think I, think, I, think I took a wrong turn here. Like, So um, they're like, oh, you know, get in the car, we'll drive you home. And so they basically drive her out of town and into the, like by the lake and like spread out a blanket and like they've got some beers and she's like oh, okay take me home haha -ha. and so the you know the main douchebag is like oh you know stop here and have a little fun with us and like kind of flick the strap down on her dress is like oops <laughs> so she like walks over to the car takes out a tennis racket and beats the unholy fuck out of him until the racket is broken <laughs> and she's like ah. Ah. And then she, she steals their car and drives away. <laughs> it's a fun character! No, she was a great character. She became, you know, stupid. She's a teenage girl. Yeah, still, stupid. Like, it's... I'm not arguing the fact that it's stupid, I'm just arguing the fact that it's in keeping with the fact that she's a teenage girl. <sighs> They're dramatic little beasts, sometimes. I just didn't care for the fucking movie. I really did not care for that movie. I'm trying to remember that one preview we got that was like, 
Everyone who's been nominated for an Academy Award in like oh, the past 20 years. Um, the Christian Bale movie. What the hell was that called? Yeah, it's it's basically Winter's Bone, but with Christian Bale. Oh, I got that. I something like Woody Harrelson. Something a factor. Out of the or? furnace. Out of the furnace. Yeah, yeah. that Which, actually looked pretty good. That looked really good. It looked actually. intense, mm. but um. It's like Christian Bale's brother doesn't take a fall on a fight, so he like disappears, and so Christian Bale's gotta like go up into the Ozarks or something and try and find him. And Woody Harrelson is like in charge and crazy. Yeah, I got that a few weeks ago. It's something I completely forgot about that one. I, I, I remember feeling bad because they're like Academy Award winner, blah blah blah. Academy Award nominated, blah blah blah. Academy Award nominated, blah blah blah. Zoe Saldana, <laughs> Academy Award winning, blah blah blah. I love it. Like, oh, poor old girl. I love it Just like find happens. something that she won and put that yeah. above her name. MTV Best Kiss Award. <laughs> That's what she did with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm about spent. Yeah. I thought it was cute. Maybe don't go see it in theaters. Um, in case you don't agree definitely, with me. Definitely, definitely don't go see it in theaters. It's not worth. it more than a buck to see. But, you know, I think it's worth a rental. Especially if you like that sort of movie. It's kind of like a cross between an action mafia movie and, like, the third act, but for the most part, it's like one of those, like, families have problems sort of movies. But, like, in a cute way. And I do like that the family wasn't, like, totally dysfunctional. It was just that they had problems, you know? Mm-hmm. Usually in movies like that, it's like everyone despises each other at the beginning, and then by the end, they're all hunky-dory. Yeah. Whereas this one was more like, ah, oh, you know, we're going through a rough patch, but we get along just fine. And the band, it's like, ah, oh, we get along just fine. On to the next town. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's my final thought. Maybe rent it. No parkour, but oh well. Picture it in your mind. Fuck that movie. Brad, final thoughts. I'm, I'm Agree totally, with me. I'm totally watching this movie. Damn. <laughs> I win the it. end.